Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. In this tutorial series, I'm teaching you how to work with custom buttons, both in Interface Builder and in Code. Now, in this video, we're going to learn how to use the Image Asset Catalog, which is this thing over here. So images.xcassets is our Image Asset Catalog. And this allows us to work with our Retina graphics, and we can have 1x and 2x, and we can even have iPad specific assets if we switch this to device specific. You can have a set of assets just for iPad. So you might have different size buttons on an iPad and that's one way to manage them without having to have all the complexity of multiple files on the left side. So the asset catalog can simplify a lot of things and it also provides a feature that allows us to make a button stretchable and that's using the slicing. But before I show you how that works, I wanna show you why we need to do this to make our buttons look pixel perfect on the iPhone. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna add some labels for the sections that we're gonna be working on. We're gonna have some buttons that we create in Interface Builder and some in Xcode. And to start, I'm gonna keep this on the smaller iPhone. So if you hit this button down here, this will make it so it's for the 3.5 inch iPhone, just to keep things smaller and contained on one screen. That way you won't have any buttons that are off screen and you won't be able to see them if you run the wrong simulator over here. So there's a couple options here. So we'll just do the 3.5 because that will fit on my screen. And the top label, this is gonna be for our interface builder buttons. And then the bottom label, I'm gonna put our buttons in code, which we'll do in another video. So these are gonna be our code button or buttons, depending on how many you wanna make. And let's go ahead and add some buttons. So I'm gonna add some buttons here and this first one that we're gonna add here is our system button. So this is a default button. If we go ahead and run the app, you will be able to see how this button works. So you're used to this button because it's used all over iOS 7 and iOS 8. And when you click on something, it fades out to about 15%. And then you let go and it fades back in over about 0.3 seconds. So there's an animation here that fades it back in. Now you get all these enhancements for free. So the other thing is this works with our tint color. So our tint color is currently this blue color, but I can change it to a red color. And you'll see that any of the interactive elements on the screen, as long as we haven't specifically set them, we set this just for the view, the tint color is going to change. So I can go back to our default and the button color will change back. So let's go ahead and add two buttons that we're gonna customize here. And I'm gonna make them about 140 points big. So this is going to be 280 pixels long. And then I'm going to make it so that it's going to be around 44 pixels or points high, then it's going to be 88 pixels high. So you can't really see anything because there's no background color. So what I could do as a, a workaround is I could just add a red background color and this would work. We would be able to see how big the button is versus this button up here, but it's not interactive. It's not showing us a change in color. So what we need to do here is we really need to add some background images and that's what we've added here. So I'm gonna switch the background color down here for the view back to default, which is gonna be transparent. Now up top, you would think that the, the image here is where you need to add it, but it's actually the background image. This image is if you wanna have an icon on top of a button, so you can customize your button that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and use our red button normal. So that's gonna be when the button is not pressed and you'll see that appear right here. And I'm gonna duplicate that by clicking on the button and holding the option key and dragging down. So that's gonna duplicate this button for us. And let's go ahead and we'll customize this one so you can see what the other image looks like and that's gonna be highlighted. So if we go ahead and run, these don't look very snazzy. We click on them, they have the fade animation that is default. So we get that for free, just like this button, but our, our corners are all messed up. So if you take a look over here, you can see the corners don't look like the smooth images that we saw when we were looking at our asset catalog. So let's go back here. And if I show the overview, you can see how this has nice clean edges. We're not getting that right now. So what we're gonna to do to fix that is we're gonna show the slicing. So you have to select the image after you're in the asset catalog, show slicing and start slicing. Now we have three different options here. We can make it so that it's a horizontal button. We can make it so that it's a vertical button or we can make it go in both directions. 
Since I applied a slight gradient here, it's gonna look weird if we resize this button in the vertical direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick to a horizontal slice. Now, what you're seeing here is everything that's gonna be unused in the image is right in here. And only the areas that are full color are going to be used. And so it's really hard to see, but there's this one pixel line and that is what's going to be tiled or stretched when our button is expanded. And Xcode's sort of smart, it analyzes and looks for the corners and then it sets up your slicing areas. Now, this doesn't quite work when you want to have it just like the center. Uh, you'll have to customize it that yourself. So we'll take a look and see how this looks when we run it and it looks already better. So here you can see the default slicing actually worked really nicely for us for this 44 point button height. And we didn't do it yet for the other image. So let's go back to the image asset catalog and fix our next image. So I'll start slicing again. We'll just do horizontal here. And this is gonna stretch or tile this one pixel. Now the way you can determine what it's gonna do is you have to click on this again, because sometimes it's not selected and you can see that these menu options appeared. So here it shows us the size and it shows us what devices, and it shows us the, si the slicing options here. So right now it's horizontal, but we have the option to also go horizontal and vertical, and we can jump back to horizontal. So once we do that, we have the option to tile or stretch, and it defaults to tiles, but if you don't like that, you can switch it to stretches, and then it will just stretch this. So you can get some weird artifacting, and I'll show you uh, when we are on tiling. So let's go ahead and run this. So both of those are working. Let's go back to our storyboard. If I were to make this button bigger, this is what tiling will do. So tiling will repeat the image multiple times and that doesn't look like a button to me. That looks like a set of three and a partial button. And so that's not quite what you want. So if you really wanted to stretch this out, you would want to set the button slicing. So click on the image here and then you wanna set from tiles under slicing to stretches. And again, this is under this third tab here so there's a couple different tabs. The most important one is this one right here. So we'll go ahead and run this again. And now you'll see that it stretches, but then we're losing that corner. And so this is why it's important when you create your art assets, you make them the right size and then they'll look good. So let's go ahead and go back to the storyboard. We'll fix this button so that it is no longer super stretched out. We're looking for a 44 point size button. So that's gonna translate to 88 pixels tall. So we'll go ahead and rerun this and you'll see that we now have these two buttons. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can get this to create some custom buttons. So these two buttons we're gonna to set to custom. I'm gonna click on this little tab right here. This is the attributes inspector. And by default, all of the buttons that we create are system buttons. But if we wanna customize the background image when you tap on it, you need to set them to custom and it actually requires a lot more work. So you don't get everything for free. You don't get the tint color for free. The font size is definitely bigger. So one of the first things that I do is I lower the font size back to 15 because that was the default size that the other ones exhibited. And here you can change the text color if you want to go back to the default. Now bear in mind that when I change the tint color for the entire app view, it's not going to automatically change the color of this. So that's something you'd have to do programmatically. So let's go back to our default tint color. So everything looks like it's matching and we now get a different behavior. So when I click on this button, instead of showing the, the highlighted image, it's actually just darkening our current image. And what we can do here is we can replace the highlighted image here real quick. So if we go over to our state config under this tab, we change to highlighted. So there's different types of states and here you can change the font size, you can change the text color, you can change the background image. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. And here we'll use the red button highlighted. So with that, we can go ahead and rerun. And now when we click on these, it doesn't look like we're doing anything because I forgot to set our, our red button normal in the normal state. So let's go back to our default state, which is gonna be our normal state. And instead of doing the highlighted here, I'm going to change the background to normal and that's gonna make them look more like buttons. And now we're gonna see the state change from this to this when we click on them. 
So that's pretty cool, but we're not getting the tint color change if we programmatically change that or if we change an interface builder. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can customize this bottom button and add a little bit of animation to make it so that it feels more at home with iOS 7 with the animations that we see when these fade back. And it's a very quick animation, but it gives you a little bit of context and that's sort of missing here. The, another option is we could click on one of these buttons. So let's do this top one and we can change the highlighted text color to something else. So we could go for like a, a dark gray color or something like that. And now when we run the app, we should see that it fades out a little bit. So that looks a little bit nicer, but it's not as dynamic as I want. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can add a little bit of code and customize that animation and behavior for our custom buttons in iOS 7 or iOS 8. So if you like this video, please subscribe and you can hit the like button on the bottom right corner.